So, Tamaro, mm -hmm. back your story over the, over the weekend, and uh, it, you talked about disrupting the taxi industry. We talked a lot, for the last few weeks, we talked a lot on sharing system, Airbnb, uh, Grab car. Mm -hmm. Now we saw, we see a new trend coming in. A lot of people are taking Grab uh, and, and uh, Uber. So SPED actually said last week that they are going to regulate these big boys. Yeah. How would this actually affect the taxi industry? Well, um, going forward, the taxi industry will have to change. Mm. Yeah, that's, that is given, you know, change is the only constant in this world. And um, they cannot, you know, because what we are hearing right now from the taxi industries are just resistance uh, towards any kind of change. And actually the trans taxi, in taxi transformation program um, was actually um, drawn by SPAD to transform the taxi industry. It's not to uh, regulate Mm. It's not only to regulate Uber and Grab, it's to transform taxi industry because there are a lot of things that are wrong with the taxi industry. You know, they are inefficient, they are, um, the cars are very badly maintained, they are mm. rude to their customers. There are a lot of problems and this, create, this makes the um, taxi industry a perfect industry to be disrupted. Mm. I, and, I think a lot yeah. of people are taking Grab and Uber nowadays because it's so much more easier. You just switch on your app and you just order a taxi from there. Mm. So, what? But taxi industry, taxi local taxi drivers, they are very frustrated mm. because they pay tax. Uh, they need to show their driving license. Sure. They need to have all these signs mm. sticking on the car windows and all that. So, do you think that the competition will become stiffer? You know, moving forward, it will definitely, definitely, definitely. It has started to become stiffer right now. Mm. And actually, SPAT actually come up with a. Uh, not really SPAD actually, um, Tan Sui Syed Hamid Alba, uh, he's the chairman of SPAD and he mm. said that, you know, um, surveys have it that, you know, 80% of uh, passengers love taking, prefer taking Uber and Grab mm. instead of taxis. Correct. So, um, yeah, and from um, the taxi companies that I talked to, they said that their collection have dropped by 30 to 40%. You know, since uh, the resurgence of all these yeah, people, yeah, yeah. So competition is getting mm. tougher, and they felt the pinch. I mean, the taxi drivers are feeling the pinch right now, mm. and that's why we can see a lot of the protests, or a lot of the resistance. Because, um, yeah, when you are being, you know, yeah. yeah but I think so. I think the probably the best way is for these local taxi drivers to jump into the same bandwagon. But we realize that these people, they are older people. They are probably in their fifties or sixties. They are, they are probably retirees, they just want to, you know, find something to do. So do you think that, you have talked to some of the local taxi drivers as well, mm. at the beginning of the story you were explaining mm. that, do you think that they will actually, you know, use apps to, to get business? Actually, a lot of the taxi drivers um, have been using mm. apps, especially Grab, because Grab has yeah, uh, Grab Taxi uh, services. Um, but at the same time, they feel like, you know, because there is also Grab Car mm. and the Grab itself, and then there's, a, there's of course Uber. So they feel like, you know, uh, because there are choices out there, um, passengers can uh, not to use uh, taxi services, even though that the taxi drivers have already, you know, joined the mm. uh, e-hailing app uh, bandwagon already. Mm. But, um, you know, and their services are regulated. Taxi services are regulated by SPAD. Right. Their fares are regulated. Mm. So they cannot offer the same kind of uh, competitive fares that Uber and Grab car can provide. You know? mm. Because there is always that base, uh, the flight, uh, flight down uh, fares and the how many uh, cent per, per how many kilometers mm. that they have to adhere to. Correct, correct. Yeah, so correct. it is hard for them to uh, innovate mm. under the certain, uh, under the current circumstances, under the current uh, regulatory environment. Mm. So that's why uh, SPAT is trying to, um, you know, sort of like tweak the, right. the, the fare system in order to make it more uh, competitive for mm. the taxi drivers. So you also spoke to SPAT chairman on this topic. What did he talk about, the transformation program? Well, um, one thing that, I mean, I went to the announcement mm -hmm. and uh, it was a press conference, so a lot of the other media mm -hmm. also uh, was there. So um, one of the key takeaways that I got from that press conference is that SPED 
is uh, they they are taking all the feedbacks. Mm. You know, they have um, approached the taxi drivers. They have seen and they have uh, gauge uh, the acceptances from the general public about uh, e-hailing apps, and all these feedbacks are within TITP. Mm. It's like seeing that you just program. program. Right. And I mean, of course, there are uh, some other things that can be uh, probably can be added into TITP mm. as well. But uh, in essence, the TITP address all these things, you mm. know, they address the uh, e-hailing apps, they address the, ta the taxi, taxi. Yeah. as well as, you know, they, they, they acknowledge that the fact that e-hailing app is here to stay, mm. you know, they're not going to go away, you cannot ban them, Correct. you have to find a way for the e-hailing apps and also the taxi mm. industry to work yeah. within the same ecosystem. So basically it's to create a level playing field That's within true. the local industry and also these people, Uber and Grab Car. Mm. You also spoke to state SMB uh, Rajiv, and he said that SPAT should actually help local taxi drivers. Now I understand that they say they are going to pay uh, five thousand ringgit mm -hmm. for each taxi drivers, but how does it actually work? It's not for each taxi drivers, lah. Mm. It's for those taxi drivers who wanted to uh, get taxi. out mm. of the leasing system because currently there are two types of taxi drivers: those who own the individual permit and those who work for not really work for companies they they run the mm. permits that these companies have so um, those who run the permits they are called under the leasing system because basically these uh, companies give them this permit mm. and you pay the rent, right. daily rent and these are the, the taxi drivers who are most affected by Uber mm. and Grab because every day they have this fixed amount that they have to pay. Mm. They know. need to pay about 40 yes. to 90 ringgit. 45, 45, 50 ringgit, you know. Uh, right. For certain cars, for certain types of taxis, the executives are probably eight, up to 80 ringgit per day, you know. So, um, since the uh, advent of Uber and Grab car, so they find it hard to meet even mm. this, you know, daily threshold. But do, we, do you actually think that 5,000 ringgit is enough for all these people to survive? Mm. Market. It's a it's a positive step, but if it's enough or not, I don't think so. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of the Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.